Hello there. In this video, we're going to demonstrate two new domain elements that we've included in our modeling tool to allow the developer to um, initialize windows into a uh, sub separate group uh, within a split container that sits with inside a docking control. If you're not familiar with this particular view, it's probably because you haven't uh, been able to watch the previous videos on uh, Quick Start videos on DocShell, which we highly recommend that you do before you continue with this video. However, you're welcome to uh, watch along. What we're looking at here is a standard DocShell model, uh, which consists of two swim lanes. Uh, the light switch element swim lane, which consists of our light switch uh, elements, such as our screens, light switch screens, and our navigation groups, and light switch commands. On the left-hand side, we have our navigation and layout domain elements, which is basically the uh, runtime implementation of our various controls that will um, uh, sync our light switch screens into and host within um, various containers. So as I mentioned, there is uh, quite a bit of information out there uh, on how this model is uh, laid out, and I'd highly recommend that you uh, watch those videos if you haven't already. So today what we're going to uh, go through are the two new uh, uh, controls that we've added. Um, and these two new controls are called the uh, group container control and the split uh, container control. And these two controls are, are specifically used um, by a developer to um, take a window uh, layout uh, control, which is um, one type of layout that we have. We also have tile view and we also have single view and embedded screen layouts. But in the case of a window layout control, this is a this is a uh, where you're targeting a docking uh, area, and so um, in this scenario here we have uh, a window layout, and if I was to look at its properties, you can see that um, it has the ability to specify that it would be docked, and when it opens up, how um, sorry that it can dock. And in this scenario here, it's opening up as document, but you can specify it to open up as docked or floating. And you can specify, you know, its initial content size. And if it is docked, you know, to which location is it being docked? So right, left, top, bottom kind of thing. So that's the, that's sort of the pre capabilities that are there in Doc Shell. Um, and that's kind of nice because you can just open up any of these windows and specify that initially they will be opened up in these positions. But what if you really want to restrict uh, and control the layout itself so that um, when these windows open up, they are very specifically targeted to very um, defined groups of windows. Uh, and again, that they are docked you know, left, right, center, or floating, and so forth. How to do that um, is actually what we're about to talk about today. So if I look at this particular application, and if I was just to run it as is, uh, the screen would uh, open up something like this for the application. And if we had customers, you can see that um, you know our initial uh, definition in our um, model was to open up the customer screen as a document window. So that's where we're seeing it look, looking like this. Uh, and products was the same. So if I was to open up products, I get the same sort of effect here. But of course, the user has the ability um, to you know, move these screens around and they can dock them to various sides of the application so they can do that. And of course, when they close it and reopen it, um, you know, those screens will open up uh, exactly how the user left it off. Um, and of course, the user can also group them by simply dragging and positioning inside that. So they get that effect where they can um, you know, basically achieve a grouping of windows. Uh, but let's say we want to have this always uh, grouped uh, this way, um, and we want to lay it out um, uh, very consistently for the user so that, they, that when they first open these windows, they're always opening up in a consistent grouped uh, fashion. So let's, uh, to do that, close this off. Let's go back to our model now and take a look at how we would do that in uh, DocShell. So as mentioned, there are these new controls. So we have our split container control and we have our group container control. And what we're going to do first is we're just going to zoom out of our model a bit and create a bit of room for us to, uh, uh, to do our work um, with this, these new elements. So what, the easiest way to do that is to zoom out and then grab all of the elements that are inside your um, uh, swim lane for your navigation and layout. And you can just move them uh, any which way you want. We'll just tuck them over a little bit here just to give us a bit more room. Um, and what we'll do then is zoom back in. So now we're back in here. And let's drop in our, start with our split container. 
So we'll drop a first split container down. Now, of course, as mentioned, you can link screens directly into split containers. You can have other split containers uh, linked to split containers. And of course, you can have these new group containers linked to split containers, which is the scenario that we're going to go through today. So the first thing we want to do is we want to uh, define this to be a docked split container. And it's gonna, we're going to dock it to the left. And because it's on the left-hand side, let's give it a, an initial width of 400. And let's call this one uh, left docked. And you'll notice here that the export name is blank. And so if we were trying to run the application, we would actually get an error. We actually get a validation error. So for example, if I hit validate, you'll notice here that uh, export uh, name is not uh, fully defined. If I click on that, you can see that it highlights the uh, element where the error is. In this case, this domain element uh, that we're seeing here. And it's asking us to specify an export name. So if I select export name here, for example, the MEF export selection tool uh, opens up. And basically, um, in Noxshell, when you're modeling your various domain elements in your model, each one of them represents a different uh, interface. So in this case here, a split container um, implements the iDocshell docked split container control. And thus, we're only seeing those controls that you have defined yourself or come built into the out-of-the-box provider that you're using um, is what we're seeing here as an example those controls that implement the iDoc shell doc split container control. So we'll pick that one. And we're pretty much done with our, our uh, doc control. And so next thing we're going to do is take a group container control. And we'll just drop that down. And let's call this one, uh, let's call this the window group. And let's, uh, again, we need to define an export name. So let's pick that. And let's see. Uh, you can see here that for uh, window groups, uh, group containers rather, we have uh, a very specific interface that we're looking for. Those controls that implement the iDoc shell doc view group container control. And out of the box, we ship with one, so uh, you're good to go on that. And of course, you can, you know, make copies of those particular controls and, you know, change the behavior or add different uh, bits of functionality as you like. Um, this is just to give you a head start. So we've got our group now. So now what we do is we simply link our group into our uh, split container. And let's take our screens and link those into the actual window group, which is our group container. So I, what I've done is I've linked uh, three separate screens, uh, which would have normally opened up initialized in a document mode. But now because they are linked into this uh, window group, now they've got more of a refined definition uh, in, the, in the sense that when they open up, they're going to um, open up inside this group, which is also linked inside the split container, which happens to be docked to the left-hand side of your uh, docking, contain, uh, docking container, which in this case is this one here. And so if we run this, let's take a look at how it looks at runtime. Okay, with the application up, let's uh, open up customers. Now you'll notice that customers is uh, docked to the left so for instance, if I pin this, unpin this, and pin this back as an example, um, it's docked to the left-hand side of the uh, docking container, which is uh, um, what you're seeing in this background here. And if I open up products, you'll notice that it opens up as a, uh, another window in that same group that we defined. And of course, create new product opens up also in that area there. And so we'll just close these down. And let's say that instead of having the group uh, as one group of windows inside a single split container that's docked to the left, let's separate the customers and the products into their own uh, group containers. So that's pretty easy to do. All we need to do is go back to here, make a copy, and we'll just paste that into our model. Let's say copy, paste. Copy, paste. There we go. All right, so uh, what we're going to do is we'll just remove this link and remove this link. And we'll just link our products into this group. And then we will link our group container into our 
doc. And let's rename this so that we, let's call this the product groups. And let's call this one our customer. There we go. All right, and let's run it and see what that looks like now. Okay, so now if we open up our customer screen and then our product screen, you'll notice that they, they open up uh, side by side. And if I was open up create product, you can see here that the representation of the two uh, group containers that we have, each containing a one or more screens. In this case, we have the, the customer group containing the customer list detail and, a, and the product group containing create new and products detail screen. But when I look at these two, I don't like the, uh, the orientation doesn't suit me. So what I'd really want to do is I want to take this group here and I want to define it uh, underneath the uh, uh, customer list group. So let's take a look at how to do that. And to do that, we uh, all we need to do is uh, select the split container and specify the orientation to be vertical. Now, of course, in the sense of vertical, um, uh, what we're going to do when we run this, or at least when it opens up, is we'll see the, uh, the two uh, window groups. Now, instead of being horizontally mated, they will be vertically um, uh, mated. All right, so now if we open up our customer screen, and we'll open up our product screen, and what we should see is, uh, yes, it opens up in the bottom, and if I hit Create Product, now you can see that the products are uh, opening up in the window below, and our customer list screen is opening up above. And of course, if we would like, we could uh, change the docking uh, from being left. Let's change that. And let's make it dock uh, to the bottom. And of course, once we do that, we should specify a height. Let's give it, uh, I don't know, 300 maybe uh, for height. And let's just change this to say bottom docked. And I think that's all we need to do. And let's run that and see what it looks like. Okay, so if I open up the customer screen now, you can see it's now docked along the bottom, 300 in height. If I open up products, ah, we notice the products is opening up, but it's opening up uh, in a vertical orientation. And because it's along the bottom now, it's probably more suitable if we change that from vertical orientation to a horizontal orientation, and that's again very easy to do. We simply go back to our split container control and change the orientation from vertical to horizontal and run the application again. Okay, so now if we open up our customer screen, followed by our product screen, you'll notice that our product screen, uh, it seems to uh, lay out better when um, it's along the bottom. It makes more sense to have the orientation for separate window container groups as, uh, in this case, horizontal orientation as, for, as opposed to vertical. And of course, if we open up our create product, um, we can see now that we're starting to uh, achieve a, a very nice layout. Now, the one thing about um, these uh, layouts is that, um, you know, you'll notice here that as I close each one of these down, discard it and discard it, and I was to open up a, say, customers again, you'll notice that it does not preserve the uh, the users uh, change. So if I was to change this, it does not preserve that. Um, that does preserve if you are not in a defined uh, split container group. So in essence, the um, the values that you um, uh, push into there, you know, in, when you define your your group layouts, is the values that are always used uh, for this particular scenario. You can see here that um, when they're not in a defined uh, group container they open up exactly how they left off. Um, and those are properties that you do set. So if you, um, if you have, uh, you can turn that behavior off uh, inside the model itself. But you can see here as I open up windows, uh, it goes back and it does, the, you know, it does its thing. And if I open up products, you can see that everything's opening up. Again, just exactly how you define it. So that is uh, um, our demo uh, with respect to our new uh, controls, uh, the split container control and the uh, group container control.
as part of the DocShell uh, suite of controls. Uh, thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed this video.